In Bundle Branch Blocks, we primarily look at leads V1 and V6. This is because V1 is mainly looking at the right side of the heart, whilst V6 mainly looks at the left. And this is what a right bundle branch block would look like. So let's slow it down and discuss the various stages of a right bundle branch block. So in right bundle branch block, the depolarization goes from the SA node across the atria and then pauses at the AV node as per usual. The depolarization then goes from left to right along the bundle of his, which gives a slight upwards deflection in V1. Then as the right bundle branch is blocked, the impulse will go down the left bundle branch and along the left Purkinje fibers. This causes a positive deflection in V6 and a negative deflection in V1. The right ventricle still needs to be depolarized, so you will get depolarization moving across primarily from the septum and the left-sided fibers towards the right ventricle. As this depolarization is not traveling along specialized fibers, it takes a lot more time and has to cover a greater distance to depolarize the entire right ventricle resulting in a broad upwards deflection in V1 and a downwards deflection in V6. Repolarization happens in a rather disorganized way in cases of uh, bundle branch block, resulting in a phenomenon known as appropriate discordance of the T wave. This means that in cases of bundle branch blocks, you would expect the direction of the T wave to be opposite to the direction of the final deflection of the QRS complex. In this example, in V1, you can see that the final deflection of the QRS complex is upwards and the T wave is downwards. This is based on the principle that abnormal depolarization will be followed by abnormal repolarization. This is a 12 lead ECG in a patient with a right bundle branch block. You can see the broad QRS complexes and the RSR pattern in V1. And you can see that there's appropriate discordance of T waves in V1 and V6. The opposite happens in cases of left bundle branch block, and this is what it looks like. After the atria have depolarized, the AV node pauses the impulse before releasing it along the bundle of his. As the left bundle is blocked, you will get some depolarization drifting across towards the left ventricle from the fibers within the septum. The normal depolarization of the right ventricle may cause a slight upwards deflection in V1. However, given that the left ventricle is considerably larger and thicker than the right, the depolarization traveling across the left ventricle will essentially swallow the depolarization occurring in the right ventricle. This is why left bundle branch blocks cause a large, broad downward deflection in V1 and an upwards deflection in V6. You may see a slight notch in the QRS complex, which is caused by right ventricular depolarization. As in the case of right bundle branch block, abnormal depolarization will be followed by abnormal repolarization, so you would expect there to be T wave discordance. And this is what a 12 lead ECG looks like in left bundle branch block. So you can see that there's large, broad QRS complexes that are going uh, in a negative direction in V1 and a positive direction in V6. And you can see that there's T wave discordance as well.